Is one of your 2023 goals to build your brand and grow your audience? If that's what you're focusing on this year, you're going to have to get really good at creating consistent content. Yes, you're going to have to create content this year. And if you're sitting here shaking your head yes, and you're like, Jen, yes, I know I need to create content, but sometimes I just don't feel confident enough to put myself on camera, or sometimes I don't know what to post, or I don't know how to create videos, or I don't know what if I should do YouTube or TikTok or Instagram or Facebook, and I'm just so overwhelmed with all the options, and I just don't even know where to start. If that is you, you're in luck because you're listening to the right person. Last year in 2022, I made my word of the year content. My whole goal was to learn as much as I possibly could about content creation and create as much content as I could in order to grow and build my audience. And that is exactly what I did. And throughout the year, I learned a lot about content creation. I learned a lot about what works, what doesn't work, and I collected a hell of a lot of tools along the way to help me grow my audience. And not only am I now growing a thousand followers a day, but I also have a couple of reels that have reached over 2.5 million views. So if you want to learn all of my do's and don'ts or what I like to call my laws of content creation, you're in luck because I have a free guide that I made just for you. It's Jen's 10 laws of content creation and it's totally free. Just go to 10lawsofcontentcreation.com. I'm also going to put it in the show notes, but the number 10 lawsofcontentcreation.com and you can get my completely free guide to all of my laws about how to create epic content so that you can build your audience and skyrocket your brand in 2023 and beyond. So go download it. I dare you. And when we talk about creating opportunity and making things happen, I've realized this is one of the things that I learned during this process. When you want something really bad, you actually deter it and you actually repel people. But when you don't give a shit and you don't care and you don't really want it, you just give off an energy of you having everything that you need and they want some of that. What if today was the day that you dared yourself to do what you've always wanted? Welcome to the I Dare You podcast. I'm your host, Jen Gottlieb, and together we're going to step outside of our comfort zones and into our best lives one dare at a time. So come on, I dare you to dive right on in. Hello. Hi, family. Welcome back to another episode of the I Dare You podcast. I'm so excited today because I'm finally sharing something that I have had to keep quiet about for a very long time. I think almost a year, I have not been able to share this story. And this is the very first time I'm sharing this story. And I want to preface this whole thing by saying, I might piss some people off by sharing this story, but I never signed anything that said I wouldn't talk about this. There was no NDA. There was no nothing. I just chose to not share it in order to be nice (laughs) and in order to uh, protect a, a big network from having a lot of drama and issues. And I did my part with that. But I think that we are over the hump. And it is time now that I can actually use this story as a method of helping you guys out. You guys know I'm always all about sharing my messes, my message. And it doesn't necessarily mean really big, messy moments, but the experiences that you have in your life in order to help other people. And this experience taught me a lot. So it started off by teaching me a bazillion lessons. And now I can use the lessons that I learned from this very wild experience to give you a reminder that maybe that you needed today. And okay, so you're like, Jen, let's get into it. Please tell me you're probably dying to hear what this is. I'll just take you back and tell you the exact story. So when was this? I don't remember exactly when it was, but it was last year. I had COVID. This was the the one time that I got COVID and I was really sick for about a week. And I was laying in bed and one of the DMs that I got at that time was a DM from a, an account that said uh, casting for Real Housewives. And I was delirious because I was really, really, really sick, like sleeping all day, couldn't focus, could barely talk, had serious brain fog. And I open up my DMs and I see this DM from this casting handle. And of course, I didn't think it was real. I actually thought that it was fake. And 
even though I thought it was fake and I didn't think it was real, I still like looked them up and I still read it. And I was like, this is funny. Like people are really doing this right now, DMing, saying uh, this. I'm going to actually open it up for you right now in my DMs and I'm going to read you what this DM said to me because I want you to envision like, what would you say if you got a DM that said this? Let me see if I can even find it. Here we go. Hey, Jen, my name is XYZ, and I'm a casting director with XYZ. We're currently working on the reboot recasting of The Real Housewives of NYC, and I saw that your mutual friends with several ladies were considering for the show, and I would love to hop on a Zoom call and tell you more about the new direction of the series. If you'd be open to a chat, you can let me know your best email address, and I'll send you some availabilities. Thanks from this girl. And that was sent to me on May 16th. And I was like, this is not real. I'm not responding to this. And I don't really want to be on The Real Housewives. Like that was also the thought in my delirium of being really sick. I'm like, oh my God, this is so stupid. I'm not going to respond to this. This is not real. And even if it was, I don't want to be on The Real Housewives. That is not my brand. That's not, I mean, I love watching it. And I love people like Bethany Frankel who've been able to turn it into a business, but like this is not for me. So it was immediate, no. And I sat on it for a couple of days and I started to feel better a few days later. And I opened it up again and I'm looking at it and I'm like, you know what, Jen, you got to jump on the unicorn opportunities. And even if this is not real, first of all, if it's not real, it doesn't hurt to respond. Second of all, even if I don't want to be part of the Real Housewives, if this is a casting company that's reaching out to me because they're interested in me, maybe I should just respond and get on a call with them. Maybe I would be good for something else. Maybe it'll open up another door. Maybe this is a unicorn opportunity. And if I don't pass it up, I'll always wonder what if. And if I get offered a gig that I don't want, I can always say no. What's the harm? So I responded a few days later when I was feeling a little bit better. I said, let's see, what did I say? Let's open that up again. I said, I really have not even looked at this until I'm recording this. Thanks for reaching out. I'd be open to hearing what you all have in store for the next season. If you want to set up a time, you can email my assistant. So they immediately email. And before I knew it, I'm on a Zoom call with a casting person from Real Housewives. And they are legitimately telling me all about this new reboot for the Real Housewives of New York City. They're really selling me on it. They're saying that it's not going to be about drama. It's not going to be about women fighting with each other. It's going to be about inspirational women in New York City doing really cool things. And they think that I would be a great fit. And they found me. Let me double down on this for you guys because, you know, I'm all about building a brand. They found me because they saw that I was, I had some mutual friends or connections to some of the other women, which wasn't really true because I didn't know the woman that they were telling me that they thought I knew. However, I knew someone that knew someone that knew her and my social media was verified. Uh, A lot of the people that I'm sure they were looking at probably follow me. So I had built a brand up that made them think that I was in this circle of women. Again, it's all perception. So I was like, no, I don't know that person, but I know someone that knows that person because they were asking me about who I knew. And, you know, they, they're really selling me on this. And I'm like, okay, I'd be open to moving to the next step if that's what you want for me. Because this woman that I was talking to was very excited about me. And she's like, I really want you to get on a call with our other head casting person. And I'm like, you know what? I'm already in this. Let's just keep going. Maybe this experience will lead to something else. I still was not sold on being on The Real Housewives. And the cool thing about this was I didn't want it. I didn't want it. I wasn't desperate. And when we talk about creating opportunity and making things happen, I've realized this is one of the things that I learned during this process that when you want something really bad, you actually detour it and you actually repel people. But when you don't give a shit and you don't care and you don't really want it, You just give off an energy of you having everything that you need and they want some of that. And also it takes away the anxiety and the desperation. And I was just like, whatever, if they like me, they like me. If they don't, that's cool too. I don't even really want this. And that was a genuine energy that I possessed in the beginning in the beginning. Okay. It let's keep going. So I then find myself on this second call. And for this second call, they told me ahead of time, they're like, I want you to dress in a really cute outfit. And this, this is the video that we're going to use to send to Bravo as like your, your, um, your trailer of who you are when we present you to Bravo. And I'm like, Oh my God, like I'm being presented to Bravo, whether I want to be on the real housewives or not, it's a good opportunity to be presented to Bravo, right? It's never a bad opportunity. So I'm in this now. I've already done it. Like I'm in it, even though I don't want it. Sure. Why not? Let's do it. So I put on this yellow outfit, this yellow dress 
Alex Perry dress. I love this dress. It was a great excuse to wear it. And I get on this Zoom call with this amazing producer who I immediately, you know, when you just talk to someone, you like, like them right away really really liked this lady like I really liked her we really hit it off and we were like laughing and joking just setting up the camera and setting up the zoom and the the fact that I didn't want this and I didn't care made me be so completely myself I would bet that a lot of women that went on this audition or this casting call or this whatever it was interview zoom tried to be the perfect housewife they tried to fit into the mold of what they thought that the casting director needed now, since I didn't want it and I didn't care, I was just myself and I had my dogs barking all around and my husband was walking in and out. He wasn't my husband at the time, but Chris, and it, I was just being goofy and I was like, I don't really care. I don't think I'd be a good housewife. In fact, I'd be a terrible housewife. I hate going to parties. I It's my worst nightmare to stay in a house with other women. Like I don't like that stuff and I'm not a socialite. I never go out in New York. Working is my life and I'm very, very, very obsessed with my job and my life is very different. I'm not your typical New York City socialite. I'm just not. And I was just myself. And because I was myself, she loved me. And I was like, oh crap, this is actually really going somewhere a lot further than I thought that it would. So she was saying to me that Bravo was, she's like, listen, um, I really like you. And I think and we were having real talk. She's like, I really think you'd be a good fit for this. And do you want this? And I'm like, well, I didn't. But now that we're talking, maybe I do. And it was funny because my desire started to go up. I stopped thinking about the actual act of me being on a TV show on Bravo called The Real Housewives. And I just started thinking about the fact that I was auditioning for something and I really wanted them to pick me. It kind of shifted. So I didn't want it. I didn't want it. I didn't want it. And then all of a sudden I was like, this could be an unbelievable opportunity. So now my mindset has stopped, started shifting and I was still not all in. I was still halfway in. And so the producer said to me, listen, we really want women that know each other. And the reason that we found you was because of this specific woman. Do you think you could reach out to her or maybe hang out with her or something? And it didn't, you know, even if she told, didn't tell me to, I had looked up this one woman and I thought that she was just amazing and we had mutual friends and she lived in New York. And so I would have reached out to her anyway. So I reached out to her. I'm not going to tell you who this is, but I will tell you that now she is one of my best friends. She is at, she was at my wedding. She is an unbelievable human that I'm obsessed with. And we have become besties because of this experience. So if I never would have answered that DM in the first place, I would have never gotten this amazing new friend. So because I got off that call with the producer and I, I was like, you know, what I'm going to connect with this one woman. And we went for a walk and we like fell in love in Central Park, walking around Central Park. And we just had so much in common and it was the best. And so now I was in this together with somebody else, with this other woman who was also auditioning and talking to her about it and really going deep into this whole thing kind of made me want it more because when you're now you're competing against other people. And she was telling me that she knew a whole lot of the other women that were in the running for this and everyone was very competitive. And now I'm in a competition. So now I'm like, oh, wow, I want it. Even though I don't, I didn't want to be on the Real Housewives of New York City. I just now at this point was like, oh, now I'm in it. And now I've been auditioning and now I really want them to pick me. So my, I just want to take you on the journey of my emotions here. My emotions went from not believing that it was real to then getting on a call and totally trying to tell them that I wasn't a fit, trying to convince me that I wasn't right, trying to convince them that I wasn't right, still not wanting it, not caring, not giving a shit. And then all of a sudden getting kind of wrapped up in this whole audition process and knowing about the other people that were trying out and then starting to think about how this opportunity could change my life in a good way. Instead of thinking about the negatives, I was thinking about all the positives with my new friend that I had made. And now all of a sudden, my desire changed. And I was like, I'm in this now. Now I'm going to go for it. And I talked to Chris about it a lot. And it was still like, I don't know, I, I wanted it but I was still hesitant as, as to the entire opportunity of being on this show. Because again, like, I don't think it's an alignment with my brand and I don't think that I would do well on it. I mean, I would be really entertaining and maybe I would inspire some people and I would bring some people into my world and hopefully help some people with just by people that wouldn't typically know me would then uh, get to know me and then come into my world and maybe be uh, inspired or motivated because of that. But there would also be a lot of not so great things that could come out of it too, as far as being that public. And then also being in a group of women that couldn't be more different than me, right? Like I'm not your typical 
New York City housewife at all. <laughs> and if those of you who are listening to this that know me, you'd be like, Jen, that is not you. It's not, but I could have brought a different flavor to it. But then again, when you're on reality TV, you have no control over how they manipulate the editing to present you to the world. So it would be really giving up control of my brand. So there was a lot of different thoughts going on. And so then the next step was that they were going to choose people to go to 30 Rock and actually interview with the head producers at Bravo. And we were kind of all waiting to hear if we were chosen for that. And I was chosen. And I'm like, oh my God, this is getting really, really real. And they were, they only chose a couple of women to go and meet them at Bravo. And I'm like, okay, now that it is getting so real and I'm going to meet people at Bravo, now I'm nervous. Now I want it. So it transitioned from, I don't want this. I don't care. I'm not nervous uh, because it doesn't matter if I get it or not to me having to do wonder walks with myself every day and be like, whatever ends up happening is for me. And it's just going to be a great opportunity to be able to put myself in front of people that could maybe pick me for something else. Just be yourself, just be yourself. So much coaching with myself when before it felt a lot easier. And the reason that I'm sharing this story with you and, and my entire thought process is because I want you to see that the brain goes through all these different levels of of wanting it, not wanting it, caring, not caring, self-coaching, negative self-talk, positive self-talk, envisioning the best, envisioning the worst. It, I was all over the map with this because this was an opportunity that had the potential to completely change my life in 2.5 seconds if you get on a big show like that. Everything changes. You go from not many, you know, I have an audience, but you go from a small audience to a mega, mega audience. You go from not many people judging you to everybody judging you. And then at the same time, positive you go from not many people seeing your work to lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people seeing your work. So there was just so much. And then now I had this friend that I was doing it with and we were in it together and we were having a good time. And so I go to 30 Rock. So let's get there. I go to 30 Rock and I got there early so I could do a wonder walk around the block at least four times. Those of you who don't know what a wonder walk is, uh, if you are just following me now and this is your first podcast episode or you've never heard of it, my wonder walks save me every day. Like they're my greatest gift to getting over nerves, to getting myself into peak state, to manifesting things that I want. So basically I take a walk as if I'm the person that crushed whatever I'm about to do. So basically I walked around 30 Rock listening to my music I, like four times. There were people that were on the same block that saw me walk around like singing and dancing four times that thought I was crazy. But I was walking around as if I walked out of that interview with the best possible outcome. Now I didn't envision them saying, yes, you're hired, you got the job because I didn't know if I wanted that. But I walked around with the feeling of I laid it all out on the table. I was exactly myself and whatever is supposed to happen is going to happen and I feel amazing. And I walked around the block like four times and I did get a little bit sweaty and I regretted that because I was in the chicest outfit. I was wearing my Moogler black dress. I, I definitely was. I didn't want to dress like a housewife. I wanted to dress like myself, but I wanted to feel really profesh and chic and New York and gin. And I thought that the outfit that me and my best friend Annabeth put together was absolutely perfect for it. And I'm excited to talk about this because I've never gotten to share any this with anyone. Literally no one knows about this except for my one friend who I can't name because I don't know if she wants me to talk about the fact that she was in this too. And my husband, Chris. So I go in and my whole mindset around this was I am just going to be so me that if they don't pick me, then it's only because I wasn't a fit. Not because I tried to be something else and uh, the and I wasn't playing the right part and I didn't do a good job, right? Um, and if they want me, they know that it's this is who I am and this is what they're going to get. So I crushed that interview. I crushed that interview in a way that when I walked out, I felt like I was myself. I told them told them everything about just what my life was really like. I didn't try to say that I was dramatic and that I fight with people and that I love drama or that people piss me off or that you know I care about impressing people with bags and shoes and cars and because I don't. And I was like, and I don't like going on trips with a lot of women and I don't like all of that stuff. Like it's not my thing. And that's what the housewives do. And and maybe I maybe I was spending a lot of time talking them out of it. But I wanted to be honest with them and I wanted to be me. And I found that they were laughing the whole time. I told them a lot of really hilarious stories. And at the same time, I had a nice balance of really talking myself up and sharing about the work that I'm doing and the what makes me different and why I could bring a different viewpoint to the housewives and why I could shake this up and actually give it a positive spin and show people a a piece of the world that I don't think a lot of people see, which are events and personal development and all the things that I'm involved in. So I did a great job and I left 
feeling exactly like my wonder walk felt. I felt like I laid it all on the field. I did my job. I was me. And if I didn't get it, it was because I am not a fit for the show and it's not meant for me, which is could totally be true. And that's kind of what I felt like in my gut. Anyways, so skip to now. I'm sharing this story with you. I did not get it. They ended up going with, as you can see now, the, the cast is public. They've announced it. And they went with a group of friends that already all knew each other. And I was like the outlier. I knew one person. I didn't know anybody. But now that I look back, I'm so grateful that I didn't get that. Because as I watch now, I'm like, this wouldn't have been right for me. There are so many things that have happened this year that if I was part of this show wouldn't have happened. And it probably would have been a lot different and maybe a lot worse. And I don't know if I would have fit in with that group, not necessarily that I needed to fit in, but I don't know if I would have enjoyed that. And the more that I watch it and the more that I see of it, which I'm not a regular watcher of this show, but I just see that it, it exactly what happened was supposed to happen. And the process of saying yes to something just as an opportunity was a really, really great lesson for me. I learned so much. I learned so much about showing up as my authentic self, no matter what. I learned so much about the fact that you don't know where the hidden gifts are. So the hidden gift was obviously meeting one of my new best friends. She's a, a gem and such a love and was, again, a guest at my wedding, like such an important person in my life. And I would never have met her if I didn't say yes to going through with this experience. I also learned what it's like to go from uh, not wanting and not caring about something to all of a sudden thinking about like the competition and like wanting it for the wrong reason or really evaluating it or going on, you know, having to sit in the discomfort of not knowing. So another big lesson that I learned from this was there was a lot of not knowing if my life was going to change in a moment. It's a big shift. Like the second they announce you as one of those housewives, you've got a lot of eyeballs on you. And it could have happened at any time and I had to wait. And they told me like, you'll know by the end of the week, you'll know by the end of the next week. And I didn't know when I was sitting in the discomfort of not knowing for so long. And that was really, really, really hard. But again, as I sit here on the floor of my closet and record this episode for you, it's a reminder to me that all of that discomfort, like you can sit in it and it'll, the time passes before you know it. And trying to manipulate situations to get the answer faster because you're impatient doesn't do anything. It actually just hurts you. So you need to be able to distract yourself. You need to be able to trust and know that it'll happen exactly the way that it's supposed to happen in the timing that it's supposed to happen. Easier said than done. But as I retell this story to you now, sitting here in a great position, really happy about the outcome, it's another reminder to me so that when something like this happens again, maybe it's not the real housewives, but maybe I'm waiting to hear about a really great opportunity or, or a bad opportunity or, uh, or just waiting for a big life-changing opportunity to present itself. I will know that it'll happen before I know it and patience and instead of be patient and don't try to manipulate or control the situation because you have no control and just be yourself and live your damn life and love your life. And the greatest thing that is supposed to happen from this situation or experience will happen. And I hate to say that it's always for you. And I know people make fun of that. In fact, my friend yesterday, she told me this joke that people say that I didn't even know because uh, many people in the personal development space say, oh, it's not happening to me. It's happening for me. So she's like, it's happening three me. What if it's happening three me? Because three is, it took me a second to get it, but three is between two and four. Yep. Uh, and I'm like, oh my gosh. Totally. Uh, but it did happen for me. And it was a great learning lesson in so many, so many things. And I'm grateful that I went through the process. I'm grateful that I had that experience. I'm grateful I met an amazing new friend. I still keep in touch with the producer. And who knows, maybe this story isn't over. Maybe there will be another opportunity that comes of it. But maybe because I'm actually releasing this podcast and telling the story, they're going to get very mad and there will never be an opportunity with this network because I'm announcing this. So uh, I'm taking a risk here, but it's been long enough. The cast has been announced and I feel like this is a story now that I can share. And I'm really grateful that you took the time to listen and hopefully maybe you learned some lessons from it or you just got some juicy, juicy drama or not even drama, but information from behind the scenes about the casting of this show. So that is my episode for you today. And what's my dare for you? My dare is I dare you to look at maybe an opportunity that's presenting itself to you right now, whether it be huge or small. And I dare you to 
step into it and lean into it and be curious about it and think, you know, what's the worst thing that could happen if I just said yes to this, or if I just went to this event, or if I just signed up for this, this thing, or said yes to going to dinner with this person or said yes to this date, even though I don't want to, and see what can happen as a result. Listen, it might be a shit show, it might be terrible, but you're always going to have a great story or you're always going to have a lesson that you learned. Always, no matter what. Or maybe it might turn out to be something really freaking awesome. So that is what I have for you today. I love you guys so much. So grateful that you take the time to listen to the I Dare You podcast. Do me a favor and share this episode with somebody. Um, Hopefully it's not going to go crazy viral and Bravo is going to get pissed at me. But again, I didn't sign anything that said I wouldn't talk about this. It was a great experience and I've got nothing bad to say about the network at all. Uh, I loved the experience. In fact, I had a lot of fun. So there we go. That's it. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the I Dare You podcast. I'm so grateful you chose to spend this time with me, but I'm even more grateful for your future self that you are building one dare at a time. So my first dare for you is to subscribe to the show and then share it with a friend who you think needs to step a little bit more outside their comfort zone and into their best lives. They'll thank you for it. I'll see you next time on the I Dare You podcast.